Welcome back. Now, the fourth industrial revolution represents a fundamental change in the way we live, work, and relate to one another. But how does it affect workers with uh, artificial intelligence coming into the fray now? Kosatu President Zingi Salosi, who recently participated in the Digital Economy Summit, joins us in studio to explore this further. Uh, Ms. Lossi, thank you very much for making the time to speak to us. I'm going to have to start with uh, political matters. Unfortunately, please, could you allow us oh, this opportunity? The, the Etaguini municipality is in chaos. Supporters of uh, the mayor there, who is on extended leave, is, they are demanding that she returns to office. Simple question to you. How should that situation be dealt with? Uh, yeah, as much as I was here for the fourth industrial revolution, but I think, let me say that probably the important thing that should guide the ANC in KwaZulu Nata are the resolutions of the uh, 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 the conference of the ANC on such matters. Secondly, key to those resolutions, it is what the, exactly is it that members ought to adhere to? It is the issue that when a person is implicated, particularly now that the mayor is appearing in court, uh, it is important for the ANC integrity and the integrity of the individual and that of the organization to be, uh, the organization firstly to be insulated from the rest of the issues that individual uh, persons are facing. So it will be important for the ANC in KwaZulu Natal to deal with the matter such that the ANC is not short of cadres. And I believe that anyone can take over from the ANC temporarily if the, 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 the allegations against the mayor are serious such that the mayor is, is facing the court processes. Ms. I'm not Lossi. sure how the mayor is going to deal with the matter of appearing in court at the same time running the municipality uh, of, 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 of Etego. Interestingly, you're saying that the organization should be insulated from matters that affect an individual. That is pretty clear what you are saying to us. But the fact is, or facts on the ground are different. There are people on the streets who are demanding and who are supporting her. So first question is, should she distance herself from those who are marching in her name? That's question number one. That's the first thing that leaders should do. If leaders are leaders of the organization and they abide by the decision of the movement, particularly the resolutions of the ANC, that leader should rise above the, those that are calling for her to return and saying we are here on your behalf. If indeed she is not part of those, if indeed the mayor uh, does not agree with what uh, those that are demonstrating outside, then she should stand up and say to the organization, I am subjecting myself to the disciplines of the movement. I subject myself to the resolutions of the ANC and the decisions of the ANC. And for anyone else who is uh, demonstrating on my behalf, I urge all of you to allow the organization to deal with these matters. Because it is the organization, look, the ANC is in charge of Kwazulu, of, of, of Eteguin, not an individual. So the individual is deployed by the organization on behalf of the, of the, of, of the movement. So the movement has to have the, 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 the last say on who then is going to be deployed. If it will still be uh, uh, the, the, the mayor, it is okay, but it will be the decision of, of the organization. We understand and appreciate that individuals are elected by the general uh, uh, members of the ANC, but the deployment resides with the organization itself. Ms. Lossi, just very quickly, it's a yes or no answer. Should the mayor resign in Eteguini, which has not been found guilty of anything yet, but it's going to be clearly a prolonged court process, as we know uh, court processes are in this country. Should the mayor resign? I think the mayor should be able, on her own conviction, step aside and allow the court processes to unfold. It does not mean that the person is admitting to guilt. We understand that we are saying anyone must be uh, is innocent until proven otherwise. But how are you going to run your office whilst you still have to run to courts? Then the, the second element uh, politically that I'd like you to, to ask of you is, has Kosatu formulated a position on the public protector? We know that uh, there are 
uh, steps that are foot in Parliament in terms of uh, or in trying to probe her fitness for office. What is Kosatu's position on the public protector? Because she's in the news daily. Kosatu's position has always been that the office of the public protector must always maintain its integrity. And at no point, and we must emphasize this, that Kosatu has... Uh, had issues necessarily with an individual in the office. But remember the statement that we issued. We have said that uh, the public protector must run the office or the office of the public protector must run within the parameters of the law. And what we understand and appreciate is that the public protector's findings are binding. But if those findings are being taken into a review, then they cannot be exercised. For example, the president cannot then uh, implement those uh, findings of the public protector. So we must allow the process that is unfolding now at the level of uh, parliament. We have, we've seen some of us it yesterday, even the MPs themselves are not finding each other there on whether it is correct for the parliament to be faced with that process. But the we think ANC caucus, I'm sorry to cut in, the ANC caucus, should it support the DA motion? for public protector was assume Kobane's fitness for, for office to be probed? Well, I can't speak for the uh, ANC caucus. Uh, I'm not at liberty to do that. Uh, but I can tell you that Kosato's view has always been that uh, we want the integrity in the office of the public protector. We want an office that is not influenced by the politics is that are that taking place. Is that she's influenced by political... Uh, persuasions. Right That's not what we're saying. Kosato is saying that we want that office, because there are many things that the office must deal with. There are many issues that are taking place. Others have been brought into the office. The office has not dealt with those matters. But what we are saying is that we hope that every decision that the public protector is not influenced by the, 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 the politics uh, on, on those matters. As long as it can be proven, as long as there, uh, there is enough evidence that would have led the public protector to arrive at a decision, and if that decision that she has arrived at gets to be reviewed by an individual uh, affected, then what we understand and appreciate is that that decision cannot be enforced, such as much as the decisions that the court have taken against the public protector. Because what we have also raised as a federation is some of the decisions that she has taken that the courts have even questioned and reviewed. So we are saying we have an office of the public protector who that takes decisions, those decisions get to be reviewed by the court, and the public protector still go forward and think that it will be easy for all of us to take any decision that uh, the office is giving to the public for what it, it should be. And, and at times when the court can say even your fitness gets to be questioned on some of the decisions, as the public, we, we, we are faced with a situation where uh, we have a Chapter 9 institution that must be trusted by the public, but its own decisions gets to be questioned by the courts of law in this country. Let's move on quickly then to, to why you're here, the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, public sector unions have become the largest inside the COSATU umbrella body. That then means that uh, public servants are or have become your core membership. Now, if we use that as a basis for our discussion, uh, the question I want to ask of you is that that pool of workers in the public sector does not seem to inspire confidence in terms of capabilities or competence, if you use, for example, uh, the audit outcomes of municipalities. Where do you begin to prepare them for the industrial, fourth industrial revolution? Only the, the fourth industrial revolution, it is here. And as a federation, we are in the process of even uh, engaging further because we have started with some workshops. But what we are saying is that each and every sector, be it in the public or in the private sector, the impact is going to be huge. And in the public sector... Let's talk simple language. Yes. When you say the impact is going to be huge, what exactly are you saying? Jobs are going to be lost. Is that what you're saying? Indeed. Jobs are going to be lost. But also we believe that jobs are going to be created. It's going to take all of us particularly government and business, to prepare this country for what is going to be in terms of the changes that the 4IR is bringing. 
I want to make an example. Uh, the Standard Bank, for an example, said we are going to retrench and we are closing down 91 branches, which takes about 1,200 jobs that are going to be lost. What are the reasons? The reason is just because you and me, we are no longer queuing into the branches of the institution. We prefer to do our banking uh, on an internet, okay? Impacting onto the jobs. That's the comfort of embracing the, the, the four IR. But the impact is resulting to job losses of a tailor at Standard Bank. Some of the reasons that Standard Bank is raising is that we need engineers on cloud, okay? Whatever that means, it means now we're no longer operating here, we're operating on a cloud. We need people that have skills, a capacity to deal with these matters. But what Standard Bank should have done, they should have, when they were planning and forecasting where the organization is going to go in the advent of the artificial intelligence, they should have preempted that these are the kind of skills that are going to be required and needed. And therefore, what kind of a workforce do we have internally at Standard Bank? Do we have a current workforce that has the skills? If not, how are we going to ensure that we are upskilling and reskilling the current workforce such that when the company is implementing this artificial intelligence, these robotics, we have people that we are taking along as our employees to the new destination that we are going to arrive at? All right. We're talking Standard Bank. You have taken this debate to Standard Bank. If you were to say to me in one sentence how it is that you are going to help improve the skills Mm -hmm. of public sector workers, with many of which you represent. What? The minister of COCTA, Kosasan mm Laminizum, -hmm. came out yesterday, again, banging on the issue of capacity, building capacity and, uh, and skills levels. What is it that you can do to upskill these workers? Because if the 4IR comes, I think you and I agreed that those workers are going to become obsolete. Yes. What we are busy with clearly and what we are advocating for is that <clears throat> the for an example the mandate of the sitters in particular because that's where skills is is is, is located in this country uh, the mandate of the sitters needs to be looked into are the sitters uh, in line with what the labor market requires in terms of skills and and and, and, and the skills that they are impacting we need to ensure that each and every sector, in the public and in the private sector, each and every sector where the CETA is located, the CETA must be able to tell us that the impact of the, of the 4IR in this particular sector is going to be this. And these are the kind of skills that are going to be required by this sector when it moves forward. And therefore, this is the kind of a curriculum and the kind of skills that we are going to give. We are currently working with the CETAs in looking into those matters. Right. Uh, and also with the uh, Department of Employment and Labor, with the Department of uh, Higher Education, uh, uh, renamed now to be Science and Higher Education. Zingasolosi, thank you very much for your time. Unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to leave it. Kosato President Zingasolosi joining us in studio here to talk everything for IR and, of course, a bit of politics. On to